All right, folks. So what we have here is the TID radio, the TDH8. And I did a video checking the spectral purity of this radio for harmonics or spurious emissions, and it failed. And it failed pretty bad. And as a result, this radio is not legal to be used in the amateur radio bands. And this is sold as a 2 meter, 70 centimeter amateur ham radio. It's really popular, mostly because of its cheap price and its uh, 10 watt uh, output, supposed 10 watt output. I haven't tested that, so I don't know. Um, I got a lot of feedback on that video, and one of the pieces of feedback that I got was, how could this be, how could this radio be that dirty if it's certified by the FCC? So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the FCC certification that this radio does have, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Before we do, I want to mention that I was contacted by TID Radio, and they asked if I would do a video review. And I said yes, so they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored videos, I'd suggest you go watch some cat videos. Okay, now that we're back, what I want to show you is underneath the battery is where you'll typically see a sticker like this. And this is the FCC ID sticker. And hopefully you can see it there. Our FCC ID is 2 AWL3, that is the company designator, and then the model, TDH8. And you can see the FCC ID sticker here, very proud. Now, one of the things I want to mention, um, I was never really interested in this radio, and then I saw a lot of hubbub about it. And so when I was asked again to review this radio, I said, sure, let me check it out and see what it's all about. Now, it's my understanding when these first came out, they had a mistake, and we'll just call it a mistake, in the sticker where it had an FCC ID that did not exist and they were subsequently pulled from the market. And it, then it's my understanding they were sold as a dual uh, ham radio radio, <laughs> if that makes sense, as well as a GMRS radio. And now this is supposedly a new version and they're sold as either the TDH8 ham, which is this one, or the TDH8-GMRS. Uh, I don't know what is different other than probably just firmware settings in the radio. And maybe we'll do a video on that, maybe we won't. Um, given that the radio is not legal to use, I'm not really that interested in investing a whole lot of time on this particular radio uh, at this point. So anyhow, let's jump over to the FCC ID website and see what we can find out. Okay, so what we see here is the Quanzao. I don't know how you say that. I think that's how you say it. Um, long to Electronic Company Co. LTD, whatever that is. And it shows the grantee code, which is the company code right here. And that is that 2AWL3 that we looked at. And here we have a list of all of the different certifications that they've applied for. And here you can see the different models. The last one here is the TDH8, and that is the one that is on this ham radio. I am assuming that the GMRS radio is designated here, and that certification was acquired on January 12th of 2023. So let's go ahead and take a look, and what we have here is the one for the TDH8. And we can scroll down and see what has been granted. And you can see there's three things here. And down here, you can see um, the different certifications and rule parts that we're looking at. And what it shows here is operating from 136 to 174 megahertz. It has received 15B. Uh, for 420 through, uh, 400 through 520, it is 15B. Now, this radio can be programmed, according to my understanding, by Bluetooth. And that is this 2.4 to 2.48 gigahertz and that has received a 15C certification. So in amateur radio, we operate under part 97. There is no certification for part 97 radios. The compliance of that radio is dependent upon the amateur radio operator to test, understand, and then use their equipment accordingly. There's no FCC certification for that. Now, what we do see for GMRS radios is a part 95 subpart E certification, which this radio does not have. So even if there is a firmware setting or a hack for this radio and you do that, because it doesn't have the sticker that says GMRS on it, you're not allowed to use this radio in GMRS frequencies. And there may be some technical limitations there too. We haven't tested them. 
So you may be asking yourself, well, what the heck is part 15B? And uh, what we have here, oh, this is the GMRS. So I jumped ahead of myself a little bit. You can see right here, GMRS designation. And the GMRS radio, if you look down at its certifications, it does have that part 95 subpart E. And you can see that here. But we're not going to go into that today because we're talking about the ham radio. And let's see what else we have here. You can also come down and you can see all of the exhibits or documentation that has been submitted as part of the certification process. Now, I just want to take a quick look at what part 15 means. And then you have your general subpart A. And if you scroll down, you can see part B is for unintentional radiators. And you may be saying, well, what the heck is an unintentional radiator? So what I did is I looked up unintentional radiator on Wikipedia. And what we found is in the United States regulatory law, an unintentional radi radiator is any device that is designed to use radio frequency electronical signals within itself or sends radio frequency signals over conducting cabling to other equipment, but is not intended to radio, radiate radio frequency energy. So what that saying is, is that it has nothing to do with our ability to transmit signals on a radio like this um, over the amateur radio spectrum for our friends and family to listen to. Yeah, it has to do with the components inside the radio communicating with themselves and making sure that the radio doesn't uh, produce any harmful um, interference to electronic devices that may be nearby at your operating location or home. So again, it has nothing to do with spectral purity. The certification doesn't mean anything in regarding that. Last, what I wanted to show was the test report that was submitted for this particular certification. And you can find this on the website as well. And here it goes over the applicant's name and address and the FCC ID and the test standards for FCC Part 15B. And it lists multiple radios. It gives the model number TDH8. But from what I can tell here, it looks like they're going to want to use this designation on other modeled radios. But I'm not entirely sure. But you can go down here and you can see the table of contents, the test configuration, the test results. And what I wanted to show is, is that what this test is actually for is this report in, is in accordance with Part 2, Subpart J, and Part 15, Subparts A and B of the Federal Communications Rules. The objective of the manufacturer is to determine the compliance of EUT with Part 15, Subclass B device. And then talks over the test methodology. And here it says, all radiated and conducted emissions measurements was performed, and that's where, uh, at Shenzhen Accurate Technology Co. The radiated test was performed at an antenna to EUT, so I'm assuming EUT is equipment under test, distance of three meters. So I just wanted to show this particular piece of this test report to show and reinforce that it's not in, in any way uh, governing or impacting the spectral purity or spurious emissions of this particular radio. Hopefully that clears up some of the confusion that folks may have around FCC certification and if that means that this radio is legal for use on the amateur radio bands, which it is not. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.